Welcome back to another week in the Bevy ecosystem. Today we've got curves, gizmos, and games you can play. Getting right into it, Bevy 0.13.2 is out with some bug fixes for the 0.13 release cycle. The full milestone is available here on GitHub. The link to this page is on the site. Bevy Math got a new tetrahedron primitive, and the analyst, which is a ring, added last week to Bevy Math, got its meshing implementation, which means it can also be added now to the 2D shapes example, which it now is. The close on escape system, which is a helper utility Bevy offers to allow closing the application when escape is pressed, was moved into the growing set of features in Bevy DevTools. This system is particularly useful if you're building a small example and you wanna be able to quickly close the app. Speaking of dev tools, system stepping is no longer a default feature and requires being enabled to make use of it. I think this is a great move because not everybody will use this feature and the people who do use it will be able to enable it. It's important to note that code using stepping will still compile with the feature disabled, but if you actually try to use it, it will print a runtime error message to the console. This is of course only if the application attempts to enable stepping, so it's quite a nice solution actually. And getting into more of Bevy's API surface, Bevy gained some more random sampling capabilities, including the ability to generate random directions and quaternions. This builds on the rand crates traits, which is another good API decision in my opinion. And of course, the final item in our summary, as always, Alice's weekly merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And that of course brings us into showcases. The Compass Map Editor gets a brand new proof of concept game, including a client server architecture. This demo shows off a ward system where players have a limited view that can be expanded at runtime via items. Bevy Mini Buffer is a work in progress developer console UI that allows asking questions of a user and even supplying autocomplete. There were two updates for this this week, so be sure to get to the right thread if you wanna talk about autocomplete or the first showcase. The next demo shows off a component-based monster AI that chooses which ability to deploy based on distance to the player. Far away and you'll start to see some fireballs as you can see here, while closer up you'll start to see a melee attack. Architect of Ruin got a fancy new task system. A number of different systems come together in this showcase to power logistics and tasks. Tasks can have dependencies, systems can be stateful, and any gameplay code can request a delivery. Architect of Ruin, of course, has its own website at deadmoney.gg. In Defend Your Eggs, you play as the red block, protecting blue blocks from the green blocks. Green blocks are collected into a chained spring-like snake using bevy rapier physics. This demo is available to play on itch.io. This demo is a sparse voctal octree stress test. Every 0.3 seconds, this showcase is adding or overriding 20,000 voxels at random locations. Attempting to remove 100,000 voxels at random locations, and remeshing it in an async compute thread. Rustroneer is a 2D procedural planet generator that generates a circle with surface deformation for terrain, then uses cellular automata to create caves inside. After that, it connects caves using a minimum spanning tree. The mesh is generating with marching squares and can be deformed at runtime. The author's plan is to keep adding until it feels like a living planet. After mostly working on libraries this year, such as Lunix, this showcase shows off the author's initial work on a 3D shooter. There's a first person controller and an extended player model. One aspect of this showcase that I love a lot is the ability to use your existing Minecraft skin as a texture. There were a couple of interesting updates during the week. This happens to be the third one that I'm showing you here, including weapon sway and a movement state machine. Also notable for this one is How I Design Awesome Gun Sounds, which is cited as inspiration in the last showcase. Bevy XPBD is transitioning away from the name XPBD and the solver, and thus a new solver is being worked on. This sandbox includes a whole host of different debug information and examples to test the new solver. The UI is all Bevy UI with some custom widgets, and some of the tooling could be useful to include in future Bevy XPBD releases, so the dependencies used are minimal. The source code for this one isn't available yet, but likely will be in the future. The next demo on our list is spatial audio based, so definitely go check out the source video. It includes audio reflections, different materials, and bevy mesh to steam audio mesh conversion with instancing support. Definitely go grab some headphones and check this one out. These voxel scenes are ray traced in a WGSL shader. The code has support for importing .vox files, magic of voxel, and .laz, or laser scan, or point cloud files. The author's intent seems to be to open source some or all of this code in the future, 
So definitely look forward to seeing that in a future This Week in Bevy. Whack a Bevy is an online multiplayer whack a mole game first created as a submission for the very first Bevy game jam and has now been updated to work with Bevy 0.13. It's available to play online, as you can see here, and the source code is also available on GitHub, including the network implementation, as this is, in fact, a multiplayer game. Fornyut is an early stage CAD kernel using boundary representation, or BREP, written in the Rust programming language. Bevy mod Fornyut is an experiment to render meshes generated by Fornyut. Currently, this comprises a single function that translates the coordinate system for each point and then uses Bevy's utilities to finish the mesh. This blurry background showcase supports Bevy UI and eGUI. It's open source, so take a look at the shader.rs file for a fairly contained example of adding nodes to Bevy's render graph. The source code, of course, is available on GitHub, as you can see here. The Snake 5K is 5,000 snake games running in the background with the top 18 snakes shown on screen. Each snake has a small neural network trying to survive and score points. The author intends to make the source available at some point in the future. And that's it for the showcases today into the crate releases. Transform Gizmo is a framework agnostic 3D transformation gizmo. Bevy integration is provided by Transform Gizmo Bevy, and the crate enables the translation, rotation, and scaling of 3D objects using gizmos. You can check it out here in this web demo. Xtol image font allows rendering fonts that are stored as a single image, typically PNGs with each letter at a given location. It functions similar to the way the new texture atlases work in that you can have an image bundle and an image font text right next to it. The best part of this library, in my opinion, is the ability to write out text and have that translated into the various components of the font image. Bevy Mod Scripting got its 0.6 release. Bevy Mod Scripting is a work in progress attempt to add scripting support to Bevy. Language support includes Lua, Teal, Rye, and Rune. One of the most notable things in this release is a new architecture.md in the Git repo, which was created to make the crate easier to understand. Bevy Lookup Curve is a crate that enables the construction and usage of curves. Curves are useful for very many things. For example, if you want to move an object from position 0 to position 1 over 10 seconds, you can do that in 0.1 distance increments every second, or you could go 0.2 distance over the first 5 seconds and 0.8 over the last 5. Curves let you define and look up in your program how far along the path from 0 to 1 your movement should be at a specific time, as you can see happening to the Bevy logo here. More details are available in the change log, and the examples are pretty critical right now to check out if you're going to make use of this crate at the moment. More docs and examples are coming in the future, however. Bevy tween, which is not the same as Bevy tweening, got a 0.3.1 release, which includes some breaking changes. 0.3.1 ships tween events, configurable schedules, and the ability to use relative times when building tweens. Bevy TNUA is a floating character controller for Bevy that just got its 0.16 release. The 0.16 release is mostly about supporting physics better by allowing TNUA to run in a user-specified schedule and supporting Bevy XPBD's double precision mode. Lightyear got its 0.13 release. Lightyear is a full-featured client-server networking library for Bevy. The 0.13 release brings Steam socket support as a network transport layer, as well as a new host server mode, which allows you to run the server and the client using the same Bevy app. Full details are available in the release notes. Bevy H.264 got its first release. Bevy H.264 is a rudimentary video player for Bevy. It only plays H.264 video streams and does not open media container files, so don't expect it to open up your MP4 for you. And finally, we've got an educational post today. This is Conway's Game of Life Through Time. This demo is actually a recreation of Conway's Game of Life over time as a visualization. Every new generation is continually stacked on top of the previous to show the evolution of the cellular automata through time. This visualization is based on the same idea in a previous implementation found on Instagram from alex.form. And of course, if the overview wasn't deep enough for you, we've got all of the pull requests that were merged this week as well as the pull requests that were open this week if you're looking to contribute. Some of the pull requests that are open only require review, so take a look and see if some of the new APIs work for you. If you're looking to get even deeper into contributing, there's a number of issues that were open this week, just like every week. Issues can require a little bit more work than just a PR review, but often even just confirming an issue is true for you as well as the issue author is useful. That's it for this week in the Bevy Engine. I'll see you next week.